us up for this next part. I'm going to give you 30 seconds in your group to make this decision because uh, you can't make a histogram without this knowledge. The lower boundary values included in the interval, read this after I read it, like there's big, there's big words here. I'm going to read it to you and then you're going to read it before you do your thing. And the upper boundary value is not. So I want you and your group to decide which interval includes the value of four hours. So if a battery lasted four hours, which bar on there would that battery be included in? Who'd like to put themselves out there and say which interval they think it falls in? Lynn. Uh, between four, five, six. So in both of these? So what I would say is, should we count one piece of data twice? No. Because if it was four and a half, are we ever going to count the four and a half twice? No. Okay. So that's a really good thing to think about. So you're saying, you say, you're saying it's right on the line, so count for both. That's what you're saying. Is that, am, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. So like would it be in here, in here, in here, or in here? Which one? This is your best guess. You don't know like we're talking about it right now. That's the whole point. Mm -hmm. This one right here? Yeah. Or this one right here? All of them but the first one. Yeah. Oh, it's gonna be in multiple. So you're gonna say you're gonna represent it multiple times. Okay, Ben? Uh, four to five. Four to five. So I'm gonna I'm gonna direct us right here. The lower boundary value is included. So from three to four. It's not in the lower boundary. So three works. From here to here, three works. So let's say there's another cell phone and it's four hours. I would need to bump this one right here up one more because four is the lower boundary. It's kind of like, and in fact, when I write these, a lot of times I write an interval. I'd write like uh, something. Oh, I'm, I'm trying to write with white ink. One to 1.9 repeated right here. And then two to 2.9 repeated. So like right up to three. So again, if there's an extra four hour battery, I have to put it right here. Because four is the lower limit. The lower, so it can't be in both. We can't count one piece of data twice. All right? So if there's a six hour battery, it has to go right there. It's the lower of the two. It can't be both. We all have to use the same one. If it was a two-hour battery, it has to go right here because it's the lower limit that counts. And if you're still like, okay, maybe get it, maybe not, you'll see with this next data set we get, okay? So this data right here, again, is the number of days it takes to produce, the plant takes to produce. What's the lowest number of days it takes for a tomato plant to produce? 47. And the most days it could take is 90. And we want to know, like, I'm about to go on vacation or something, I need to make plans to see if someone's going to need there to pick my maters, okay? Because you don't want to be on vacation. Your tomatoes are out there all ripe, and then birds get them or a raccoon gets it or something, right? So can we just look at this and see, like, when we would really need somebody or when to avoid? Yeah, it's kind of hard just by looking, right? If only there was a way to make this visual. Oh, there is. Let's make a histogram. So... I'll help us with the first two days, the first two intervals. So by interval, that means a range of days. Because you don't want to just look at this many this day, this many this day. That'd be a bunch of little amounts maybe, right? So from 40 to 50, 40 to 50, how many ripe plants or ripe tomato plants are there? One. There's only one, just 47, right? Oh. There's one. Okay. I'm going to skip 50 to 60. What about 60 to 70? So notice if I go 60 to 70, am I including 70? No, I only include the lower in the range, okay? So 60 goes in 60 to 70. It doesn't go in 50 to 60. You can't use data twice. So I'm 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Ooh, don't go on vacation that week. And I'll let you know my father-in-law is a farmer. He legit plans vacations during the summer by when stuff is supposed to be ready. Like wheat is earlier in the season than this. And he like makes plans based around that. So your job is first, I'm going to hand out the paper. You've got this stuff on a paper. You're going to fill out the frequency table and draw a histogram for these intervals of 10. Let's finish up this frequency table. How many 50 to 60s? Nine, four. One, two, three, four. I got four of those. Okay. 70 to 80. Nine. Oh, I almost included the 80. Don't include the 80. The lower bound 70 works. We got nine of those. 80 to 90. 
six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then 90 to 100? One. One. So again, we, we, do you guys see what the lower bound thing we're talking about is now if you're looking at it? So you include it in the lower if it's in both. You can't count it twice. Now I need a way to keep these numbers on the next slide. I think I got it. Which one, Greg? I got So 70 to 80, I'm going to underline the ones I'm using. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's good. That's good. Thanks for saying something, Greta. Okay. So now we're going to use these data points. Whoops. Whoops. We're going to use these data points to make a histogram. Because you're going to end up counting it twice. These are the numbers I needed. Okay. So I got one right here. 40 to 50, I had one. 50 to 60, I had four. Now, this thing I'm doing where I'm writing the number, that's just organizational because sometimes it's hard to tell. I think it's a great way to just know for sure what's there. I got a 9 and a 9. Don't be double and a 6. And a 1. So that number thing is not a requirement for a histogram, but do you see how like now there's no question how many are in each interval? Now, a thing I want to point out again, in this histogram, do I know any specific data points from the histogram? No, like in fact, if I'm in this section... I could have nine values of 60. Could. I don't know. I could have them all spread out. I could have, you don't know, right? You guys see what I'm saying? We, we just know distribution. And someone was saying, yeah, there's a lot. So if I'm going to go on vacation, what, what should I avoid? What days? Yeah. This area here for sure, and I might even consider these, right? Yeah. Yeah. But I'm like, man, that seems like a really long time. If only there was like a shorter amount of time, I could know for sure. Well, guess what we can do, friends? We can change our interval. So instead of doing by tens, you're going to try out intervals of five. It's on the back. So again, a thing you don't have to do, just a suggestion, I suggest making your own frequency table here. So the lowest is 47, right? So 40 to 45, 45 to 50. 50, 50 to 55, 55 to 60, 60 to 65, 65 to 70, 70 to 75, 75 to 80, 80 to 85, 85 to 90, and then 90 to 95. So how many times those happen, right? This is by fives now instead of tens. Same data, same, same tomatoes. Because I'm like, I can't just not go on vacation for 18 days in the summer. That's crazy talk. Okay? Maybe I can find a gap in there. So we're going to change our interval to be fewer days. Should I have more in each interval or less in each, in each interval, do you think? Less, because I need more bars, right? Okay, let's do this. So let's change the color up. Who can tell me? The first one was 45 to 50. There's one, right? So a good point to make. Is one falls in this range. From the histogram, if I don't have data, I don't know if it's 45, 46, 47, 48, or 49, right? It's one of those things. 40, uh, then 50 to 55. How many are 50 to 55? Two. Okay. And then four. 50 to, 55 to 60, there's four? Oh, my bad. My bad. One, two, two, and eight. Eight. I have four. Okay, 60 to 65. Let's look at the data. Let me look at the, I don't have, I can't look at both at the same time. So 60, so what's going to work? 60 to 65 is 60, 61, 62, 63, 63, four. It's because, like, because, like, this has 75 a lot in it, but do you still yeah. count it as 75 and then, like... 75 like, is the lower bound, so you count it. No, yeah, I know, but, like, do you count, like, these all say 75, so do I start, like, here and then yep. go over it, or do I, like, start, like, at, like this you, No, you start at the Just, first one. Okay. Then I had five. 65 to 70, we had five. Yeah. 70 to 75. Three. I'm going to fix this a little bit. 70s, so this had five. Then we had three? Yep. And then six. Three, then six. Then three. Then three. And then one. So here's what's cool. 
According to the last bar graph, there's a whole 18 days where they was like busy, right? But I want this vacation. Now that I go in intervals of five days, is there a chunk of time I could get away for a little bit maybe? Yeah. Yeah, which one's, hang which one's kind of being pointed out there? Um, 45 to 60. I think 45 to 60 would be good. I also see, see that middle of that right there. There's only three plants. I could like get out of there maybe right there and ask someone else to do it for a day. Do you see... Did we see that dip in the, in the last histogram? No. No, it looked like it was just busy that whole time. Yeah. We got more specific with our interval. We can see something different. Lynn? Isn't it three, three, one? Yeah, it's three, three. Oh, I messed it up. Three, three, then one. Okay. Thank you, Lynn. Oh, that erased a lot more than I wanted. Okay. But this is what I want to point out. That dip right there is not in with the larger interval. In fact, you could like make a bad histogram that was like, hey, guaranteed, I can make you a guarantee. From 40 to 100 days, all 26 will be, <laughs> will be ripe, right? That interval would be a bad interval. Or 0 to 49 and 50 to 100. That'd be a bad interval, just two things. That's not enough, right? So the smaller the interval, the more detail. But sometimes you need bigger intervals to get a broader picture. So it's just, just important to note that we saw different things when we got more specific. Not, one's not good, one's not bad. For today, we're going to make a box and whisker. And remember, a box and whisker makes the quartiles. We're cutting our data into quarters. quarters. So we're going to have a minimum, a first quartile, and you have a little thing on your paper for this, a median, a third quartile, and a maximum. That's... Those are the five pieces of data we need to make this thing. And I'm going to put it right over a number line down here. 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90. Did we need to draw that? No, you already got it. You already got this on the bottom of your paper. So the first thing we need to identify, well, not need to, the easiest two things to identify are what two numbers you think. The median would be important, but I think the minimum and the maximum, this isn't like you don't have to do this first, but it's just like already done, right? So the first thing we have to like work to find is the median. The median is the number in the middle. Some people use a cross-off method. I kind of like to use my pointer fingers and work from outside in. I've done this a, a couple times today, so I know it's right there. It's between 70 and 72. So my median has to be 71, okay? What's one way we could check it after we get it? You can do the cross out, or you could just count all the numbers to the left and all the numbers to the right and make sure it is the same. It's 15 and 15 in case you're wondering. All right, so we have the median. So I cut my data in half, but I don't want it in halves. So I want it in fourths. So I need to cut my halves in half. So I'm going to do that, and that's going to take a little longer. Oh, no, it spun on me on the iPad. Okay. So if we want to use a cross-off met method, you could. One, 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 one more, one more, one more, one more. Boom. 62 is halfway between my half. So that has to be my first quartile. So I still have a half in the upper. I need a half in my half to get quarters. So cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it. Cut it, cut it, boom. I feel like I got it. Okay. So, the, this part right here is going to make my box, or you might hear it called the interquartile range, the inner quarter. 62, 71, 80. So half my data is in that box. There's two quarters of the data. And then I've got a 90. And I've got a 62. No, 47, sorry. And, and that's going to be my maximum and minimum. Why is it 80? Oh, it's not 80. It's 90. Oh, for third quartile? Yeah. Let me double check. Isn't it 70? Cross. I thought it was 70. It's 78 and 80. So it would be like... Cross. It's 79. Cross. 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 Uh-oh. I got 81 that time. 
So it's. Well, I might need to rewrite the numbers now. We got to figure this out. You guys got a different upper than I, I did? I got, yeah, I got 78. How? Tell me how. I got okay, cross. How? Cross. Wait, no, it's 80. Cross. I got 78. Cross. I got 78. Cross. Oh, yeah. Cross. Because there's 1, 2, 3, yeah. I got 78 that time. I got 78, yeah. Okay. So I messed that up. That's Wait, right here, 78. Okay. Because I really just counted it. Yeah. Wait. 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8. There we go. Fixed it. Oh, yeah. 16. What's it? So always double check. That's the myth. That's, yeah. It's when there's lots of numbers. Yeah. Double, maybe even triple check. Okay? Yeah, I had to like five. There it is. Now, the whole point of this is a quarter of our data is in here. A quarter of our data is in here. A quarter of our data is in here. And a quarter of our data is in here. One thing we can look, like the median, is the median closer to things that are higher or lower? I would say higher. This median is closer to the third quartile, isn't it? That means a quarter of the data is in this little part. And it's closer to this than it is all the way down to the, the lower. So our data is concentrated a little on the high side, actually. So again, there's no specific amounts except the maximum and minimum. It only tells us how concentrated our data is. And if it's a small spot, we got a lot of data in that small thing. Because a quarter of our data is in here. Are right, you guys seeing that? That's the smallest chunk. A quarter of our data, all of our data is right in there. We don't know what it is, we just know it's in that range, okay? So it talks about distribution. How is it laid out? When you get these, it's way easier. I kind of imagine this. There's like a circle. The median, we cut it in half. And then if we want quarters, what do we have to do to our halves? Cut them in half. That's what we're doing with those quartiles. That's kind of how I like to remember it, okay?